Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and in today's session on geomorphology, we are going to learn about one of the important and interesting components of the applied geomorphology that we learn in geomorphology and also in geography as geohydrology. In geology also, it is taught as hydrogeology. So it is basically used interchangeably at many places. But basically we are going to do what? We are going to integrate geomorphology and hydrology together in order to understand its applied worth. So let's understand. But before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So now let's learn about this geohydrology. So what is this word all about? Geo basically means the study of the earth as we know and hydrology is about that hydrosphere, about the water component. So this geohydrology many times also referred to as what? Groundwater hydrology, geohydrology as we know and hydrogeology that is part of the geology. So when we talk about geomorphology or geology in which hydrology is also a component that we need to discuss that is when we discuss this geohydrology segment. So basically in applied geomorphology, geohydrology becomes one of the important parts of geography syllabus. So it is an area of geomorphology and geology that deals with the distribution and movement of groundwater in the soil and rocks of the earth's crust commonly in the aquifers. So we are going to learn about this entire structure of this geohydrology today in this session. So Basically, geohydrology is what? It is an interdisciplinary subject and it can be difficult to account fully for the chemical, physical, biological and even legal interactions between soil, water, nature and society. So that is where it is important to have this interdisciplinary subject where it integrates all these factors. That is important. Then study of this interaction between this groundwater movement and the geology and geomorphology is quite complex. So it is not that simple in terms of the visibility on the ground, but it has a complex nature of interaction. So groundwater does not always follow the surface topography, which is part of the geomorphology as we know. So what happens? It means the structure of the ground, underground is important, geological structure, rock types is important. So groundwater follows pressure gradients as well, that is flow from high pressure to low pressure. So remember that is important. So often through fractures, conduits and circuitous paths. So that is where these fractures, joints, faults and inter layers of these structures of rock that become important. So if you look into this image, one is what you understand as the surface water and the other is the water table where this aquifer is important. And let's understand how this geohydrology is important part of the applied geomorphology. So first important thing is this word aquifer. Many times people get confused that what is this aquifer and how can we simplify it? How can we understand this simply? Is it just the water table? Now remember, simplistically speaking, if you look into this image as well, this is basically what? It is an underground layer of water bearing permeable rock. Now this is not just underground layer of water. It is that layer of rock which is important, which is permeable in nature. So permeable rock basically means what? There is this particular layer of rock which permits this water to go inside and stay there. So it is there in this aquifer that we say. So aquifer is a structure. It is like a water tank and water tank is made of some material. So what is this material all about? It is of this rock which is permeable in nature. So that is what an aquifer is. It is underground layer of water bearing permeable rock, rock fractures or unconsolidated materials like gravel, sand, silt. So this is what is making of this entire water tank inside the ground which is called aquifer. So groundwater can be extracted using water well as we know. So study of water flow in aquifers and the characterization of aquifers is called hydrogeology which is major component of the geology as we understand. But if we say just simply geohydrology it is largely part of the surface as well. So it is part of geomorphology and geography as well. So that is the basic line of difference. But we are talking about this interaction. So it is not just about isolation. It is about interaction of this underground and the surface features as well. Apart from this, related terms like aquitard, what is this? We need to understand. It is basically a bed of low permeability. Now remember, it is aquifer is the 
existence of more water in that permeable lock layer but when it is starred it is basically what it is having low permeability so it does not have that kind of water table in that aquifer as in a normal way so it is less that's where it is aquitard and another term is aquiclude so aquiclude or aquifuge is something which is a solid impermeable area underlying or overlying an aquifer the pressure of which could create confined aquifer now remember confined aquifer is important here to understand that what is an aquifuge aquifuge is that impermeable area remember impermeable basically means it does not support the passage of water so it is where it is either underlying or overlying a aquifer so if this is a aquifer this is where it is aquifuge it means it does not allow water to get into this so what happens this kind of aquifer as a total we understand as a confined situation so aquifuge is having a potential of lot of water so when we say there is an aquifuge it means we can drill into that and extract that water from that confined aquifer that is important now there are certain factors and important parameters related to this geohydrology that we need to discuss one of them is porosity and permeability so what is porosity it is represented by the symbol n is a directly measurable aquifer property it is a fraction between 0 and 1 so remember the n value that is the porosity value always varies between 0 and 1 indicating the amount of pore space between n consolidated soil particles within a fractured rock so basically 0 is the least value 1 is the maximum value so if the value is 0.69 or 0.7 for that matter it basically means it has a higher level not very high but at least moderately higher level of porosity so that is this value representation then the next term is permeability as we know it is an expression of what connectedness of these pores so these pores if they are connected it means they allow this water to pass through that is what the permeability means so basically it has many holes between its constituent grains that is important so for example pumice remember this rock so which when is unfractured state can make a poor aquifer so if pumice is there as unfractured it does not have any pores it is very poor aquifer but if it is fractured then it is a good aquifer that is important and related to this porosity and permeability is a law which is important to remember here is darcy's law in detail you can discuss this darcy's law separately you can study it from any book but just remember darcy's law in terms of this porosity and permeability it is commonly applied to the study of this movement of water or other fluids through porous media and constitutes the basis for many hydrological or hydrogeological analysis so darcy's law is important representation of this amount or the degree of this porosity which contributes to the permeability and formation and the structure of a given kind of aquifer that is where it is important in geohydrology now the second important component obviously is the water content it is represented by this theta so it is also directly measurable property of this so it also varies between 0 to 1 so remember the maximum is 1 0 as the minimum so the value accordingly will tell us about what is the water content apart from that there is an important terminology that we need to remember that is called vadoz zone so what is this vadoz zone now if you remember this image now just understand that there is a particular zone which is termed as unsaturated zone it basically means that it is the part of the earth between the land surface and the top of the phreatic zone which is shallower zone the position at which the ground water is at the atmospheric pressure so a zone from where this particular surface where the ground water is at a given atmospheric pressure this zone to this particular zone is called vadoz zone which is part of the shallow zone as we can say so vadoz basically means shallow and remember it is part of that zone from where on the surface inside the ground that shallow zone is there that zone is called vadoz zone and below this vadoz zone is the zone of saturation which is part of the underground water layer so that is important here now ground water engineering another name for hydrogeology which we understand is a branch of engineering which is concerned with ground water movement and design of wells pumps and drains so that is important here to remember another term that is ground water engineering so what is the main concern of this ground water engineering and how it is related to geohydrology the main concerns of ground water engineering include ground water contamination conservation of supplies and water quality so as we understand with the overuse of ground water what is happening 
overuse of groundwater and also pollution increasing due to human activity it threatens the system the entire aquifer which is part of the underground system which is very much important for our sustenance on the earth so what we have learned here is that what is geohydrology right and what is its application in daily life in that way we can understand that groundwater is important in our daily life also the key terminologies that we have studied in today's session that is important so at, as we have discussed about aquifer aquifuse aquitard all these important features so remember these important terminologies that is related to the underground water and how it is interactive in the spheres so remember vadose zone as we have studied so these are important terminologies and takeaways from today's session on geohydrology which is part of the larger discipline that we understand as applied geomorphology so this is a part where geomorphology and geology are interlinked so it is the study of this interaction so don't get confused that is geohydrology part of the geology or hydrogeology is part of only geography remember geomorphology is about the surface component geology is about something which is related to underground so in this study of geohydrology or if you can say hydrogeology there is an interaction between the surface water and the groundwater in a way it is a linked in a given hydrological system where rocks have a dominant role to play so that is where we understood about porosity permeability all those factors that we have discussed so remember this geohydrology concept so now when we have understood about the geohydrology part of the applied geomorphology we are going to learn about the major chunks of applied geomorphology in the lecture to come so stay tuned stay safe keep watching